Hello, uh, I'm Jonathan. It's a bit weird for me being this side of a camera rather than at the back somewhere. Um, but uh, here we go. And we're presenting this week's This Time Tomorrow. Uh, with me I've got Jules, my wife, uh, who some of you have met and some of you have possibly never even realised existed. Uh, I'm thinking of you, Jay, when you didn't realise I was married. So, uh, This Time Tomorrow, what will you be doing? Um, I'm an online teacher, so I work for a college in Wales, but I teach internationally, uh, A-level and GCSE, maths and science. So as Ruth has a two-week half term, Ruth's our daughter, um, and I only have a one-week half term, we're going up to my parents so that I can take advantage of free childcare whilst I continue working for a week. And I will be working in the home office, that would be the one here, upstairs, not the actual home office. We um, have two. We do have two of those, because we can't both work in the same room. If I'm on a call or she's on a call, it doesn't work. So I shall be teaching in my home office, uh, looking after some stuff for the local councils. During lockdown, um, it was a bit weird for us, um, partly because Ruth was at home because the school's shut and obviously we were both working, so we did a lot of juggling, didn't we? It was like tag team parenting, let's be fair. Um, so Ruth is at an age where she needs to know which parent she can ask for things. You know, can I get the paints out? Can I do this? Can you help me do that? She's not yet fully independent. Um, and her additional needs also mean that she needs a bit more than that anyway. So we did a lot of things. We, we learned a lot about each other. We also did a lot of art. So Ruth has spent a lot of time drawing and painting and colouring. We have purchased an absurd amount of the art materials, which has been quite fun, I have to say. <laughs> um, and the, heart, the house is nicely covered in art, which is lovely, and Lego and that kind of thing. Obviously, my teaching, because I'm doing GCC and A-level, I had to provide centre assess grades for every student I teach for, um, which was exceptionally stressful, because with online teaching, they're, um, they're into every different exam centre across the country. It's not a central school where we've seen them do the mock papers. We've never actually met these students. I have no genuine proof that the work they've submitted is even theirs. I mean, you get to feel for it. You, you feel who's genuine, who's not, but you can't prove it. So there's a lot of work to be done in terms of proving the grade that was there. Um, and Johnny was very good, particularly during the early part of lockdown, covering for me whilst I basically worked late into the night and early into the morning. And that did mean that Ruth learned a lot about the walks in our local area. Um, she doesn't like walking. Um particularly, but we managed to get out most days. Bribery works very well for other parents with similar problems. Fruit, jelly, strings. Yeah, they, they we, we also bought a trampoline uh, the weekend before lockdown and that was definitely a godsend the first part of lockdown when it was sunny mm. and nice. She's not so bothered now, but it was good then. Um, we also have an indoor swing bar, which makes a hell of a difference. Uh, and not being arty, um, I can't draw any of those nice things, um, I decided to learn Welsh instead. So if there are any Welsh speakers in the church, I can tell you very, very few things, uh, but that's growing. Uh, words of encouragement. Um, so Johnny asked me to think of a Bible verse, but I'm not actually particularly good at that, to be honest. The Salvation Army um, obviously does, you know, encourage Bible reading or the rest of it, but for some reason with me it just doesn't stick. I get I get the edges of it, I get the meaning of it, but I don't, I don't remember enough words to be able to say it. But I will say one of the things I've noticed about being in the Salvation Army is how incredibly positive they are. If they don't have anything to say, they either won't say it or they will find something positive and genuine to comment on. It's not words of encouragement which aren't, aren't heartfelt. It's always heartfelt. It's just the way it's put across. It's very, very, very honest and very, very positive. And it's, it's a wonderful environment to be in. So that's, that's my word of encouragement is to encourage. Uh, and for me, uh, actually, it was something that Dad said to me um, towards the beginning of lockdown when we were looking at the churches financial problems so my dad goes to St Mary Bread and Jules goes to Salvation Army mum goes there we're all, a, all over the place he's at the Salvation Army mum and he's at St Mary Bread he is and um, <laughs> dad's been watching our CBC services which is nice and one of I the think... things he said was um, God will provide for you uh, and I think he was speaking to each member of the congregation as much as he was to the church as a whole uh, we were trying to work out at that time whether or not we should take on Rachel as a minister in training uh, and Mike had delivered quite a stark picture of what things were going to look like. So God will provide. That's that's the word of encouragement that I took from him. Um, and I think that's true. Um, God bless you all. Have a good week. Bye.